Good evening, Axe family. Amen. I bring you greetings right here from Charleston, Illinois. Amen. Where we all have received a glimpse of God's spirit. But guess what, saints? As you all are enjoying your summer, just wanted to edify you all. Wanted to keep you all uplifted. Just keeping your minds, keeping your hearts, souls stayed on him. Amen. So think of it of the great think of it as the greatest privilege, amen, to be um, shooting such a video. Think of it as the greatest privilege um, just to even be preaching God's gospel, amen. Think of it as just a, um, a constant reminder on how my life on this earth is not over yet. God wants to use me, and he wants to use you too, amen, saints, amen. So we're going to hop right into it. If you have your Bibles, why don't you turn to the book of Esther, amen. And this is where the bulk of the message will come from, amen. Esther. What a wonderful book. Um, what, a, what a wonderful book because what we find here is um, men of faith, women of faith, amen. Um, um, if you ever have the idea, um, some of you women out there who ever have the idea that um, you don't know what to do, you don't know what God has called you to do, the book of Esther is just for you, amen, amen. So we're going to hop right into it. The book of Esther from chapters 1 to 10, the entirety of the book, Amen. What does it speak on? Well, what it speaks on is that we find Mordecai, which is Esther's cousin, a man who adopted Esther. And what we find throughout the book is that they've traveled to a land, um, an Egyptian land, a, a, a land in between Egypt and India. A man, most call it a um, Persian Empire, the, the Median Empire, those kinds of names. Amen. Amen. And what we find is that there is a king whose name is Ahasuerus. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And that king was looking for a wife, a man. His previous wife didn't please him, so he was looking for a wife. And that's not the end of the story. What we find here is that he finds a Jewish wife, a man, a God-fearing wife, and whose name is Esther, a man. Now, at the time, he didn't know that she was Jewish, but indeed she was. And Mordecai, her cousin, was also. The same guy who adopted her was also a Jew. And so they were living in this land wherein there were a lot of pagan worship, different um, other gods that they were being that, that that were being worshiped but they served the only true and wise god amen being jesus christ and so what goes on in the story is that we find esther is then appointed as queen amen she marries a Hesiris, um and what we find is that there was a petition by a uh um commander uh, uh commander in charge commander in chief amen and what we find is that his commander, whose name is Haman, amen, keep that in mind, Haman, who's his commander-in-chief, wrote a petition, came to the king and wrote a petition that anyone who didn't bow down to the king or that world's way of living, amen, had to be killed or destroyed. Just to pause right there and just relate that into everyday vernacular, amen. In today's society, we find that there's a lot of things that this world sort of requires you to do, amen, because if you don't do it, amen, that it's hard to live in this world, amen. If you take a look at our, our society's weight, our society system, amen, wherein we need to build our credit, we need to, 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 to get an education to <laughs> to make something of ourselves, I mean, is the, is the bigger picture, but you know, we... Uh, um, just our different ways of operating in today's society, amen. And what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn it into good, amen. So getting back into the lesson, that way, that world system, um, um, if you didn't bow to the king, if you didn't bow to their pagan worship, you were going to be destroyed. But guess what? We find two people in Mordecai and Esther, being Jews, God-fearing people, who did not bow. Uh, had hurt Haman. Amen. So it hurt him so much so to that where he got that petition from the king so that him and his men could go kill. But it didn't get it didn't stop there. God's people were not harmed. Amen. They were not injured. Amen. Like we find in the book of Daniel where they're in the fiery furnace. His children were not injured. Amen. So what we find here is that Esther being the queen, being um, the wife of Ahasuerus, 
wrote her own petition and went to the king, and the king and Esther found favor in the king's eyes. Amen. Pausing right there. How many of us know that as children of God, as 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 servants, um, 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 friends of God, we have found favor in his sight. We're his children. Amen. How much more can he do for us, his children, than, 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 than the grains of sand, than the hairs on our head, than, than allowing birds to find their food? How much more can he do for his children? He can do a lot more. Amen. And so he finds, Esther finds favor in the king's sight, and he reverses that petition to kill the Jews. Oh, buddy, let me stop right there and get into some real deep intellect theology. No, rather, let me go into some real deep intellect godly wisdom. It's not theology, it's godly wisdom. Amen. So what we find here is that man, Haman, actually stems from a sect of the Amalekite nation. Amen. Um, and that word Amalekite means like a type of flesh. Um, 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 but dating back to the book of Samuel, we find the people were looking, mind you, I'm getting into some in-depth stuff, so you got, really got to listen. Dating back to the book of Samuel, we find King Saul. The people wanted a king, and so they, and God allowed them, and so the prophet Samuel allowed them, and God allowed them to have a king being King Saul. Now, if you know anything about King Saul, the reason King Saul lost his throne, lost his 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 crown um, um, was because he didn't obey God's will. God told Saul to go out into this one particular um, um, area of land and destroy everything. Amen. But Saul and Saul thought that he could get back, he'd keep back some of the good cattle, some of the good kings, queens, whatever he found that was displeasing in God's eyes, but God said destroy everything. And because of Saul's disobedience, David became king. That's where we find King David. He became king. But what's interesting to know is that very land, that very um, 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 piece of land that God said destroy everything in, there were a group of people in there being the Amalekites, being children of Haman. Amen. So what we find here is that all the while, going back now, we're going to go back to the book of Esther later on in the um, Old Testament. We find in the book of Esther now here that Haman has returned and he wants to destroy the Jewish people. Hmm. God said, King Saul, I want you to go and destroy everything. Oh, but guess what? There is still seed left. And so now we find him in the book of Esther wanting to destroy the Jewish people. And it's so interesting to note that how a lot of times from the outside looking in, a lot of people say, well, uh, God was a God of wrath. He liked to kill people, this and that, whatnot. But it was for a bigger picture. There's always a bigger picture in God's head. I mean, we only can see in part. We, our will, our thoughts are minor. But there was a bigger will. There's a bigger picture. And we see it here in the book of Esther. Amen. So what happens to Haman in the book of Esther? So Esther gets the petition reversed, and the king destroys Haman and all his sons. Wow. Hey Amen. I thought that was so enticing. I thought that was so revelation poured on my spirit because what the enemy meant for evil, God turned it into good. Hey Amen. And if you bless God's people, he'll bless you. So Haman was destroyed the same way he wanted to kill the Jewish people by hanging them. He was hung. And his children. Amen. So interesting to note that God wants to do a miracle in your life if you stay obedient to him. Amen. Esther was a queen after God's own heart. A woman after God's own heart. And she was blessed in the process. When you pray for God. And in the book of Samuel it also notes that it is a sin not to pray for your brothers and sisters. It's a sin not to pray for other people. We've got to pray for other people. Because all this walk with God is about is loving him. And loving his people. Amen. I hope that message blessed you all. Amen. I want to finish by saying Esther was appointed queen. She was already queen. She was appointed queen. But her cousin who adopted her, Mordecai, who was soon to be killed because he wouldn't bow down to Haman and, or the king. Uh, because he didn't bow down. Because he served his God. He was spared. He received eternal life, not just in this world, but 
ultimately what's to come. Amen. And he was appointed second in charge to the king. Amen. With the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it into good. Haman and his sons were killed and God's will came to fruition. Amen. I want to hope you all were blessed. Hope you all could receive what I have um, um, blessed you all with. Hope you all are enjoying your summer vacation and you all stay blessed. This is a short eight minute video that I hope you all can dwell on and bask in. Amen. Love you all. Stay blessed.